Hello and welcome to Mahika Tutorials. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss method overriding. We know that polymorphism is the ability to take multiple forms and polymorphism is of two types, compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism. We have seen an example of compile time polymorphism which is method overloading and now we are going to discuss method overriding that leads to runtime polymorphism. First we will see what is method overriding and then we will see how using method overriding runtime polymorphism can be achieved. If a subclass or a child class has a method as declared in the parent class it is known as method overriding. Method overriding simply means when a child class has a method with the same signature as in the parent class then we can term that as method overriding. Method overriding is used to provide specific implementation of a method that is already provided by its superclass and it is used to achieve runtime polymorphism. Like here we have an example of method overriding. Let's say we have a class vehicle which has a run method whose return type is void and run is the name of the method and it does not take any parameter. Similarly, we create a class bike that extends vehicle that is bike is the subclass of vehicle class and here again if we give the method with the same signature that is void return type run name of method and it does not take any parameter then this would be termed as method overriding because in subclass we are giving the method with the same signature as given in the super class. Now here we have a main method in which we are creating simply the instance of bike class and calling the run method which will lead to the invocation of run method from the bike class. Now to make method overriding more clear and to understand how we can achieve runtime polymorphism using method overriding we will move to Eclipse so that we can take an example. Now here we will create an example where we will create different shape classes. There will be one super class shape and then for shape we will define different subclasses to understand how we can override the method and how we can achieve runtime polymorphism. And there will be a main class in which we will put the main method. So let it be test class and it will have main method. So we will add main method to it. Now we will define our rest of the classes. We need first our super class shape. So we will define class shape first. Now here we are going to give one method draw whose return type is going to be void and it does not accept any parameters. Here we will add a message to it. Let's say drawing no shape. Now what we will do, we will create different subclasses for class shape and we will override the method draw here. Let's say class circle. And we want circle class to extend shape class. Okay, and then we will override this draw method here. Let's change the message drawing circle. Okay. Similarly, we can give other subclasses for shape class. Let's say rectangle. And here we will change the message drawing rectangle. Okay. Similarly, we will give third subclass for it as well. Let's say class triangle. And here we will give drawing triangle. Okay. Now what we have done, 
we have a draw method in shape class and then we are overriding the method in all the subclasses of shape class that is we have the method with the same signature in all the subclasses like we have in this super class now here in main method we will put our code for invoking these methods now here what we will do we will create a reference variable of shape class and now we will instantiate it with the shape object and then we can invoke the draw method similarly we will allocate different objects to s reference variable now we will instantiate it with the instance of circle class and then we will again say s dot draw and then we will instantiate it with object of rectangle class s dot draw again and similarly we will instantiate triangle class and then again s dot draw okay now here in main method what we have done we have created only one reference variable of shape class and in that reference variable we are allocating different objects at different type at different time now this is known as upcasting when we allocate the instance of subclass in the reference variable of superclass that is termed as upcasting so we are giving the code for upcasting here as well as here and here also it is upcasting since all three are subclasses of shape class now we will first execute this and check our output and then we will understand how it is working okay so this is our output we are getting drawing no shape because first we have allocated the instance of shape class and then when we say s dot draw it calls the method from the shape class because s is referring refer, referring to the object of shape class and similarly when we say s dot draw again this time it is calling the object from the circle class why because now s is referring to the object of circle class and then we have drawing rectangle because at this call s is referring to rectangle class similarly when we say s dot draw it calls the instance from it calls the method from the triangle class because it is referring to the instance of triangle class okay so how this is taking place what we have done we are overriding the draw method in all the subclasses now here you can see we have s dot draw s dot draw s dot draw number of times but each s dot draw is responding in different way that is each s dot draw is calling a different draw method this is what is polymorphism now why it is termed as run, runtime polymorphism we can move to presentation to make it more clear why it is termed as runtime polymorphism now when we give s dot draw s dot draw at the time of compilation compiler looks for draw method in the shape class and the reason for that is since s is the reference variable of shape class so this s dot draw is considered to be the method call from the shape class but at the time of execution what happens it is calling the draw method from respective classes depending on the object to which this s reference variable is referring first time it is referring to shape object so this method call will be binded to this draw method of shape class similarly this s dot draw will be binded to the draw method of circle class similarly for rectangle and triangle it will be binded to the draw method of respective class and this binding takes place at the time of execution therefore it is known as runtime polymorphism or late binding or dynamic binding so this is how using method overriding we can achieve runtime polymorphism but one thing which is important is that using this mechanism we can only give the call to the overridden methods that is using upcasting we can call only overridden methods now let's suppose if we have one more method 
in rectangle class and after allocating the instance of rectangle class if we say s dot m1 over here since s is referring to the instance of rectangle class we are trying to invoke the method m1 from rectangle class but it is giving error why because as we have discussed using upcasting we can call only the overridden methods and the reason for that is when we say s dot m1 the compiler will try to look for m1 method in shape class because s is the reference variable of shape not of rectangle so this is not possible with upcasting we can call only the overridden methods or the methods of the super class for which we have used the reference variable hope now the concept of method overriding and runtime polymorphism is clear to you in next example we will see where actually this upcasting becomes mandatory for us to be used thank you for watching this tutorial